America needs a tidal wave of the old time religion. I have sinned against you. How dare you! We have no need to doubt God. The heart of Babylon is preparing the nations to receive the Antichrist. I didn't even build that house with money from the church. I built it with money from my book. I don't make this stuff up. Repenting of your sin. It is a moral issue. They got together and swore a pact to the devil. I just enjoy seeing people worship, <sighs> praising God. Hey everybody and welcome to Believe It or Does One. Does not what you do. When you got it, everybody, and then they're there. Yeah, when you got to go, you got to go. That's what they always say, uh, 100% off the top of the, the, the thing. Tre- Trevor says it, stamp of approval. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bump. Put in a big stamp sound effect right there. Uh, put a big red approved stamp on the screen for everyone to see. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's Those are some editing notes for you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Damien, what's new? How's life? Mm. Well, you know, it's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We're getting into the cooler season. It's time for layers. It's time for mm-hmm. all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm trying to make positives of all the shit that's going on in the world. But <laughs> why? What's going on? Uh, oh, you know, just life. Uh, we get a we get uh, we get to fall back tonight though, oh, so yeah. we get an extra hour of sleep. So everything's gonna be okay. What I like now is that. Uh, Phones and uh, stuff do it automatically. Mm-hmm. You don't even so you know. don't even think about it. Yeah, and you're just like, why am I not as tired as I usually am? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is this the one where you get more sleep? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm bad at math. Fall. Fall back. Spring forward. Yeah. That's the worst one. Yeah. It always reminds me of that Avril Lavigne song. Uh, Skater Boy. No, the one that's like, fall back, take a look at me, and you'll see I'm for real. And if that don't appeal to you, let me know, and I'll go, because I flow better when my colors show. And that's the way it has to be, honestly, because creativity can never bloom in my room. I'll throw it all away before you lie, so don't call me with the compromise. Hang with the phone, I got a backbone stronger than yours. I feel like I missed a line in there. I don't know if I know this song. If you're trying to turn me into someone else, it's easy to see I'm not down with that. I, I don't remember it. And I was around when that came out, I'm mm. sure. It was on the same album as Skater Guy. Oh yeah. So we have a we're gonna get a we're gonna get into this like light and breezy episode. <laughs> yeah. But first, a little announcement. Mm, that's true. Uh Trev and I have been doing a little bit of talking, a little bit of soul searching, some might say. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Some hand stuff. And yeah. uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> It's just talking and, and yeah, yeah. soul searching. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we're going to uh, change things up a bit. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it looks like we'll be taking a little bit of a break just to kind of figure out what uh, the next steps are. Um, yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah, I'm personally just kind of growing tired of the format. Mm-hmm. I think we've been doing it for f- over five years now. Yeah. And yeah. uh, almost six years, and um, I think I, just some change up, I think would be good. I think I want to move away from like the history aspect of it and move mm-hmm. more into like a little more current events. But again, we don't really know exactly. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sit down, have a few talks about it, figure out what's the best course of action for us going forward, and yeah. for uh, for everyone at home going forward. Yeah, so I think we're gonna we're gonna take a break starting at the in January. So we'll finish it this year, take a couple months off, and mm-hmm. then come back uh, f- refreshed with some new ideas. Mm. Um, we're still gonna I'm still gonna keep doing the video essays, but for the podcast, we'll just take a little bit of a. Are we planning our return for Easter Monday? Ooh, that could be fun. <laughs> the birth of Christ, the rebirth of. Wait the. Resur- resurrection of Christ, the rebirth of um, the belief that it's a resurrection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like when Gandalf went from Gandalf to the Great to Gandalf the White, right? Yeah. And then what's the one where Gandalf has the big breasts? Oh yeah, Gandalf the hugely endowed. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a good. That one. was my favorite one. Yeah. They never mentioned it oddly. Yeah, weird. Yeah. They just they no kept riding contact. that horse. And yeah. It was just like <laughs> <laughs> you know. Exactly. I don't know. You think you would have said something. Yeah. Gandalf, your titties are huge. (laughs) So, normally, Mm -hmm. uh, this is the worst uh, um, segue ever, (laughs) but normally we record a little while ahead of time, and then we um, release Mm -hmm. um, 
but this time we're recording the day before the release uh, for a couple reasons. Um, and one of them is, with everything going on in the world, I've been a little sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's been affecting you, but I've had you know, a few fights and um, discussions with people and just um, kind of feeling defeated. Yeah, no, that's fair. I know, like, I I, I don't want to say I'm fortunate, but I, I'm not really around too many people who I have too many differing views yeah. on some of the stuff as of late. Yeah. So it's a little easier for me to be a bit more open discussing that with people. Yeah. But I do know, like, I've heard from you, I've heard from another couple friends of ours who are really, like, really badly affected by yeah. everything that's happening and uh, kind of the discourse about what we're about to discuss. Yeah, and I think, like... So, obviously, like, um, if you're friends on Facebook with me or whatever, Mm -hmm. which some of you are, but, um, yeah, I stand firmly with Palestine. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm against genocide. Yep. Um, I think that genocide, as a rule, is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the things that I've been hearing a lot is to be careful that not to be anti-Semitic. And I completely agree. And I've for sure. been way outspoken against anti-Semitism for a very long time and yes. will continue to be. And I think it's it's crazy to me, and, and people are being awful to Jewish people. Right. Like, it is not okay. And, like, I've heard of people saying, like, they have to put their Sorry David away because people just mm-hmm. assume that means they stand with, um, right. with Israel. And it's like, no, it's a religious symbol, like, yeah. Yes. The problem. The problem with a lot of this is that uh, bigots and hate-filled people are using this as an excuse yeah. to be more bigoted and hate-filled. Yeah. Th- the problem is, is that a lot of the people, um, the like a lot of the pro-Israel side is using that as kind of like a smokescreen. Exactly. As well as like the Holocaust, they're saying like, yeah. well, but the Holocaust, like we, we, if you don't believe this, you're anti-Semitic. It's like, if you're critical of Israel as a state yeah. and you're critical of Zionism, it does not mean that you're critical of, you're, it doesn't mean you're anti-Semitic. Yeah. And to, to claim that someone is anti-Semitic because of that in itself, is is that not anti-Semitic? Yeah, I think so. And like the thing I've been thinking a lot about too is like, Traditionally, Mm -hmm. historically, people Mm -hmm. have been very racist against people who they have a disagreement or in conflict with. Yeah. And that's always been wrong. Mm -hmm. Like it's it was always wrong in like World War Mm Two when you'd have those character caricatures of Japanese people just because you're fighting somebody doesn't mean you have to be racist racist, Right. right? And same with Vietnam, same with like every yeah, and like even like the war in Iraq and and things like that, you get like these caricatures of Arab people and it's always been wrong. It's Mm -hmm. always been bad to just because you disagree with something a government is doing. Doesn't mean you should be prejudiced and racist against the people from that country. Right now. I think the issue with something like this, especially for uh, peoples of the two like conflicting parties here. Yeah. Uh, one thing that really complicates it is just how long this has been going yeah. on. Like that's something that when I say complicated, I don't mean like, cause I think it's a pretty, I think we, we can see what's happening and it's not complicated in that sense, but it's complicated in the sense that there's so much history yeah. and there's, there's so much just like uh, what people are told from the time they're born. Like there's a lot of indoctrination yeah. about these things. There's a lot of these things. And when you're in these difficult situations, it's so easy to just kind of other people. Yeah. And it's something that they have control over and something that they, they can like kind of rally behind. And it's just like, this is why we're mad. And this is yeah. the person we're mad at. Whether that's the case or not isn't necessarily true. But I think that's kind of an unfortunate consequence yeah. of this type of conflict. Yeah. And I think because we're going to talk, we're going to get into more about just religion and conflict. Mm-hmm. So we won't be just talking about um, Israel, Palestine, mm-hmm. but it'll definitely come up. But like just religion and conflict um, in general. And I think the one thing I keep hearing is that it's not about religion, it's about land. Mm-hmm. But when it's holy land, and the reason <laughs> that some people are there is because it's considered holy, then yes, religion has a, I mean, a part of it. That's one of those things where I'm just like, I, I want to be respectful, but at the same time, I'm just like, it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's such an arbitrary reason to like lay claim for something and then to genocide of people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, um, here we are. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> exactly. So when you look up um, 
it, when you search does religion cause wars what mm-hmm. you're going to get is a lot of yes. um yes it does <laughs> but you're going to get a lot of christian apologists who argue that it doesn't and one of the biggest apologetics is so this guy in a book in like 2005 2008 mm-hmm. somewhere in that area late uh 2000s um said in his book that he, what he did was he took this book, these three volume book called the Encyclopedia of War, and he went through and he categorized which each war, what was the reason for each war, and then he did this calculation and he said that only seven percent of wars throughout history, documented wars throughout the history of time, only seven percent were because of religion. Um, so his argument is that. There's way bigger factors than religion, and that religion really isn't an issue. So that's that's their main argument. And then okay. he, or actually I think later on somebody else, goes set and says, yeah, and if you only count, if you take out anything involving Islam, that brings it down to three, implying that Islam is like the worst. Yeah. Um, well, that's one of the big things that so many of these apologists do. Yeah. It's just like, well, what about Islam? Yeah. What, what about, about Islam? Islam is one of our most common comments. You sent me a comment about it. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just last night, actually. Yeah. And uh, Islam, like any other religion, is guilty of this as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, is I don't. I am not a Muslim. I do not uh, believe in their religion, and I think they have done a lot of evil things. But I think in the West. A lot of times that um, gets they just become a scapegoat mm-hmm. and it's like they be it's a whataboutism yeah it's we can't have accountability for yeah. ourselves because they're worse over there yeah. see look yeah. how bad they are exactly mm-hmm. and it drives me fucking yeah. bananas and also too on the show we don't know much about it so yeah we're, we're not equipped to speak about this really yeah. so that's why we usually don't yeah we usually don't and the thing is too when you say and if you remove anything involving islam you're not saying that islam is the aggressor in that situation and do you know what uh, conflicts usually involve Islam? Uh, conflicts that also involve Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> They're usually at each other's throats. It's not usually just one religion involved. Mm-hmm. So it that doesn't make any sense. But the other thing that doesn't make sense about the 7% thing is that he only took wars where religion was explicitly the reason so wars that right. had like you know the blank christian whatever war like something that had either religion in mm-hmm. the name or was well known to have religion as the main reason right even though most of these probably were driven by religion yeah a yeah. lot yeah and religion is usually a factor mm-hmm. it's not usually the only factor it's a factor yeah it's a really good way to uh divide people and uh say like oh well we're right and you're wrong yeah. because we have divine authority exactly and i think any any war started by any sort of king especially ones who believe in a divine right by default that's yeah. a religious war is it exactly. not exactly exactly i mean if you th- if you believe that your leader is appointed by god yeah. and you're going to war for them no matter the reason that's a holy war yeah Exactly. So, and if you, yeah, if you believe that what you mm-hmm. believe is the truth mm-hmm. and that God of the universe, the creator of the universe has spoken to you, you or your people and has given you the truth. Spoiler, he hasn't. He hasn't. You're Sorry. going to think that your side is justified in whatever right. actions they do and it's for the greater good even if there's some evils you're doing it for the greater good and that's um rarely true uh, you know what it seems like historically speaking the greater good has never been for the greater no. good no more often than not it's just taking marginalized communities and then <laughs> just abusing them yeah or killing them yeah it's um <laughs> Back to our comments, I got in an argument with somebody in the comments about um, bathroom laws, like bathroom bills. Oh my God, are you kidding me? And it's like, the argument that somebody could dress up, a man could dress up as a woman, pretend they're trans, and then be a predator, is like, it it reminds me of that meme, have you heard that meme where it's like, um, what if... uh, 
what if people who get, go missing in the Bermuda Triangle are time travelers? And like, what if? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter. That's not happening. No. That's a weird scenario you've created in your head to mm-hmm. other a group mm-hmm. um, because you're afraid of that group for other reasons. Mm-hmm. And then you find a reason to marginalize them. And, um, and you find a reason to make them the oppressor and you feel like the victim when it's completely the other way around. If someone is going to go into a bathroom to abuse somebody or assault somebody in yeah. any way... They don't care what bathroom it nope. is. They just walk right in. They're not gonna. They're not gonna dress up. They're not gonna pretend. Why would they do that? Yeah. There is absolutely no reason for them to need to do that in order yeah. to commit these crimes that these people are so afraid of. Exactly. One, it's not happening that often, yeah. really. But even if it is, it's 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 such a nothing argument. Yeah. It's like that's not what's happening. No, not at all. But I mean, so much of it again, it's it's historical too. It's yeah. stuff that. <laughs> Yeah. That's what they always said about like uh, like gay people were yeah. saying like oh they're all predators they're yeah. all yeah well they tried to in the seventies they were trying to pass exactly. laws that gay people can't be teachers yeah because, because they were worried about the children yeah which is just another uh, smoke screen it's yeah. another thing like oh we care about the children that's why we're doing this yeah. greater good right there yeah <laughs> it's not yeah it's ridiculous and um. And yeah, people do this with religious groups. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, well, it's like and well, religious groups f- uh, pushed a lot of that stuff. Yep. The Christian right was a huge part of a lot of that stuff in the seventies and the eighties. Yep, exactly. I mean, w- <laughs> that's what drove a lot of this yep. stuff. It's it's the it's the the puritanical, you know, bullshit about what they think uh, a good Christian fam- nuclear family should be. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And. Um, so yeah, it's, it comes out of a lot of. Uh, there's a really good article on Medium, by the way, about this that I recommend. Um, I'll put the link in the notes. But um, yeah, another thing they talk about is superiority. Like mm-hmm. like I said, like if you yeah. if you think God is telling you, and it's the in group. Yeah, our group versus their group, the in mm-hmm. group versus the out group. Yeah, um, it's so easy to blame the other group for all the world's problems. It's just like. Like, I mean, yeah, we see this with racism all the time. Like, you marginalize a group. You put them in this community that doesn't have the resources because you don't want them around you. You deny them food, and you deny them jobs, and you deny them um, regular amenities that everybody else gets. And mm-hmm. then crime rises in that neighborhood, and you're like, oh, it's because of their mi- it's because they're this marginalized group or this, yeah. they're at this ethnic group. And yeah, well, that goes back to like with like redlining and you know pushing people into poorer communities and then complaining about all this stuff too. It, yeah. It's again, you are creating these problems and exacerbating them, and yeah. then blaming those communities for the problems that you created. Yeah, which back to Israel Palestine. So yeah. much of that is exactly. like, yeah, I'm not saying what Hamas is doing is right, but I understand how it, we got to that yeah. point. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like everybody always wants you to condemn Hamas, and yeah, of course, of course we do. Yes, yes, but that doesn't mean we don't look at the reasons why it happened. Yeah, and it was the same. This is the same with any terrorist attack. As soon as somebody says yes, but we should look at our accountability, like nine eleven, like what yeah. have we been doing around the world to make people so mad at us? And then as soon mm-hmm. as you say that. You're you're the bad guy and you're siding with the terrorists and it's like no I'm not saying what they did was right it was very bad no, and evil U- but <laughs> the U.S. government has been uh, you know dealing in the Middle East and all those countries yeah. for decades yeah. you know putting money in uh, pushing war starting coups all this shit they've been doing so much over there yeah it's like. I don't want to say it was something was bound to happen, but yeah. something was probably going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit, um, some history and some uh, more recent conflicts that mm. have to do with religion and things like that. Um, and this will be very brief and kind of a, um, and we can, yeah, feel free to obviously interject with any thoughts or anything. <laughs> All right. But, um, 16 or 638 CE is when um, the Muslim rulers took over Jerusalem. Um, and then the Christian Crusade started in 1099 CE. Mm. So a little while later. Well, here's a couple of religious wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, conflict went on for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jerusalem and, and the quote-unquote Holy Land has been um, 
pretty violent for quite some time. And it's not like, I mean, yeah, it was in Jewish control before that, but then before that you had the Roman occupation and then you had the Babylonian. I mean, read read yeah. the Bible, people. If I, if I say anything, <laughs> if there's any message I have from this podcast, it's read the Bible. But apparently they were getting along pretty well with with the Muslim world. The Christian mm-hmm. world and the Muslim world were pretty getting along pretty well. And then they were like, what if, though, we had Jerusalem? <laughs> I mean, all it takes is one guy in power to think like, oh, this would be really nice to have. Yeah. And then so. Zionism mm-hmm. happens. <laughs> I'm skipping a lot here. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go back. We'll go back. But Christian Zionism, too, mm-hmm. um, happens. And it's basically if we can get the Jewish people back to um, Israel and we can help in any way we can, then that'll bring about revelations and the rapture will happen Mm -hmm. and we'll get off this planet and um, everybody will be destroyed and we're uh, we're the good guy for trying to bring out the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like another part of the Western involvement in the Middle East as well. I know another thing I'd read about was uh, the, like a big reason the U S wanted involved, like are such proponents of Israel, not just for that, but also just so they have, basically a, a base in the middle east so yeah. they have access to everything yeah. over there it's such a easy port to oil yeah <laughs> and exactly. all that shit yeah. right i mean whether or not that's the case which i'm sure it probably is yeah. a big part of it but well yeah i mean even the fact that they won't say ceasefire like trudeau uh, just said humanitarian Netanyahu break. already said uh, that they can they don't want a ceasefire they yeah. said no to it they already poo-pooed it yeah and uh even like yeah, Trudeau After said humanitarian carpet bombing break. A like, neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Even um, our good friend um, Bernie, bro, Bernie, mm-hmm. um, Bernie Sanders. He's not saying ceasefire. He's mm. saying humanitarian break, which is better than what is happening. But it's it's very political and it's very like, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it is still wild. Like I was seeing a thing people calling for uh, Trudeau to stop selling. Uh, weapons to Israel. Yeah. Which is still crazy to think that we do. Yeah, it's saying, hey, please, please don't um, yeah, we're do known- these murders anymore, but also here's some weapons to do those murders but with. But not just that, a country that's, you know, supposedly has this reputation as like the peacekeepers, you know? Yeah, for exactly. How long? Yeah. Canada, oh, Canada's the one they come in, they keep the peace, they do this, yeah. yet we're selling weapons to a country that is actively bombing civilians. Yeah. Um, that that seems a little fucked, don't it, you think? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, we're on the world stage. We're famously known for for being mm-hmm. yeah the UN peacekeepers. A lot of times, those are Canadian. Yeah. I should see. I I think there was a, a petition or something about that. So if we can maybe find that, yeah, that might be a good thing to link Put about that. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and then from as long as there's been Christianity, there's mm-hmm. been anti-Semitism. Yep. Um, Jewish people have been kicked around Europe. Um, Basically, with calls of deicide because they say that they killed uh, Jews, killed our Lord, so we have to um, punish them for it. Which is always weird because wasn't your Lord also Jewish? Yeah, he was. A, yeah, he was a Jewish man. He, all the disciples were Jewish people. All the uh, <laughs> everybody who wrote the Bible was Jewish. Was Jewish. So yeah, what's the problem? Exactly. I don't get it. And, um, yeah, marginalized, hated. Well, I, I get it. I get around. why they're doing it. Yeah. It's just an excuse for them to do terrible things. Yeah. But. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Many massacres in France. Um, Um, and then it's not just those three religions fighting. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's other religions, well, not no, just the Abrahamic religions. One of the big ones, though. Yeah. So, yeah, hard to ignore. Yeah, very hard to ignore. <laughs> uh, uh, have you heard of the doctrine of discovery? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so as you know, they're discovering new parts of the world as people are going out and exploring. As Christopher Columbus is sailing the ocean blue. They're finding these oh, okay. cultures. I and have heard of this. Saying, yeah. What do we do if we find a place where there's already people? And so the Pope steps in and he's like, you know what? If they're not Christians, make them. 
make them Christians by force <sighs> or just take over their land. So, yeah. Um, so I there's a website. It's Indigenous uh, Corporate Training, Inc., um, but they have a very good summary of the doctrine of um, of discovery, and it's really what set the framework for the country we live in, um, how to treat the indigenous people, mm-hmm. and it's um, been kind of the doctrine of of the church for a very long time. They have to, the Catholic Church has disavowed it now and said, no, we don't like this. But basically, it was it provided a framework for Christian explorers in the name of their sovereign uh, to lay claim to territories uninhabited by Christians. If the land was vacant, uh, then they could define it as discovered. Um, by vacant, they mean Christians didn't live there. So they, yeah. could dis- they discovered it. So that's, yeah. Right. I do like the what you're saying. That they don't like it now, but they, yeah. they liked it for, what, six, seven hundred years? Yeah. And they, they, they disavow it now, but they're not going to do it. They disavow it to, now, but, yeah. you know. 700 years of you know yeah colonialism colonialism and, and yeah. genocide and have you heard the thing about how gen z is called the uh uh christopher columbus generation no because <laughs> everything every time like they discover something new they think they're the first people to ever discover it <laughs> <laughs> uh, but That's we love funny. our gen z's um yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a disgusting thing. Let's see. On June twenty sixth, two thousand fourteen, twenty fourteen, a unanimous eight to zero decision that marked the first time the highest court in Canada has recognized the existence of Aboriginal title on a particular site. Um, I should have read read this before. Uh, the doctrine of Terra Nullius that no one owned the land prior to European assertion of sovereignty. Uh, is this just a way to kind of like not have to acknowledge and acknowledge uh, Aboriginal land claims? Yeah, basically. Again, and this is still happening all over the place. This is happening in Hawaii too, right? Yeah. Like that's a big thing. Yeah. Right now. Fuck yeah. And Oprah. Like, what's that? Oprah. Yeah. That piece of shit. Yeah. And other pieces of it's shit. It's funny because we've been Elon saying Musk forever too. that Oprah's a piece of shit. I have been, yeah. And. Uh... <laughs> You know what's really funny about that? The first, for some reason, the first thing that I really remember me not liking about Oprah was when she came out with the Oprah chai at Starbucks. <laughs> yes. Is that is that not weird? That's so funny. Because I remember seeing it and there was like a promo video and just like, I made those chai. It's like, no, you didn't. You went into yeah. a focus group. You tried three things and said, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. And then you marketed it. Yeah. But exactly. it made it seem like it was this journey and she like grew yeah. the leaves herself. So I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. And then the more I learned about her, the more I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. Not great. Not a great yeah. person. And then she inflicted Dr. Phil and Dr. Yeah, Oz Dr. on the Phil. world. God of, uh, or what, John of God um, was a huge one too, where, yeah, just a piece of shit rapist that she yeah. introduced to the to more victims. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, just have, yeah. I don't know. I just think if you're that influential, you should have a little more accountability for the people that you bring, uh, that you give a platform to. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I don't think that you should try and brand yourself as this wholesome uh, wellness kind yeah. of guru. And then, and then but she's that's like, just me. right after that, she's like promoting her book on happiness. Mm-hmm. And like, her, her version of happiness is ignoring the world around you and yeah. just being happy. And it's like, I get there are times where you have to like take a break from everything and like, but that's mm-hmm. not how change in the world happens. No, for and, sure. Yeah, and like, you know, there's that whole Bill Burr bit where he's talking about like her her early career was built on exploiting like people. Yeah. like she was a Jerry Springer show yeah, basically exactly. for, for yeah. a long time. Which, you know, what to a certain degree, I'm like, hey, if that's what you want to do, and you're like fine about that, and you're upfront about that, and yeah. you know, like that's kind of what it is. I'm a little torn on it. I'm like, yeah. sure, if that's what people want to do, but don't like try and pretend that you're like this amazing, wonderful person who came by everything honestly and you're yeah. doing this like great wellness kind of thing. You created an empire off exactly. of exploitation yeah. and <laughs> ruining people's lives. So Yeah, exactly. Weird tangent. No, I, I'm okay with it. I think growing up, we always knew what was happening kind of in Northern Ireland with the troubles. Mm. Um, that's... And that was always troubling for me when I was a Christian uh, as a teenager. Like, why are two Christian groups fighting each other? I feel that way about most different yeah. Christian infighting. I'm like, yeah. 
you're not that different. Yeah, it's true. You're the same book. Yeah. And that's another issue where it was more about marginalized groups fighting back. And, yeah. Um, and it's it's less about religion and more like you got lumped in with your yeah, religion yeah, yeah. and then things happened. But it's still, it's still religion's a huge factor. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't just dismiss religion as mm-hmm. a factor because there's, yeah, um, Bosnian War. Um, so starting in 1991, when they uh, Bosnia split off with from Yugoslavia, um, the Serbs. It's I'm really butchering this. Um, it was basically a, a genocide against the Muslim population, and um, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, Sudan, the Darfur situation, mm-hmm. um, mostly Christian population getting destroyed again. There's ethnic and and racial reasons as well but they also happen to be mostly christians that are getting Mm -hmm. killed um and then yeah the the rohingya genocide um yeah it's i don't know we could list all the genocides and battles and terrorism that's another thing too we barely touch on terrorism like that's not a international conflict but like someone blowing up an abortion clinic or somebody Mm -hmm. um you know, blowing up a, whatever, like shooting up a school. <laughs> a lot of times there are religious reasons for that too, or shooting up that, that guy who shot up the grocery store. Or, yeah. Just like there's racial reasons. There's religious reasons. 100%. There, yeah. Like so much of like our history and colonialism and everything like yeah. that is, is religious and racist and they're yeah. all tied together. They're right. So tied together. Like yeah. we look at uh, the subjugation of like, the, the Native Americans, or yeah. we look at uh, slavery with with like black people and things yeah. like that. So much of that is like they were looked down on because they weren't white and they weren't Christian, yeah. right? And they're from a different place, so they were exploited. Or you go like even like um, the British Empire and tons of places like yeah. India and like looking down on that. And like there's a whole mess of stuff with like yeah. the caste system and everything there too. Yeah, <laughs> but like again, it's it's. It might not be front and center the first thing or the 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 reason, yeah. But it's it's so tied into all the other reasons that you can't ignore what it is. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, exactly. The slavery. It was like mm-hmm. we want to have slaves, but we it's yeah. against the Bible to have Christians, other Christians, as your slaves. So let's just go somewhere where we. Which is weird because didn't they didn't they end up raising a lot of them as Christians? Oh yeah, so and they converted a lot of them to Christians and kept them as slaves because so, that's how it started. But that's not how it kept going. But yeah, right, okay, yeah. But even now, like you see within churches, there's you'll have a black a black church on one side of town and a white mm-hmm. church on the other side of town, and it's like yeah, they. Yeah. What's what's so? I find that such a, it's really wild to me like how how influential the like the black church kind of became yeah right because it's i i guess they they saw it as like a a beacon of hope but to me i just anytime i think about it i just it feels like it feels like a a home of oppression yeah that was forced upon a marginalized group yeah and has just kind of become much bigger than what it was you know what i mean yeah I, I know that's not what it is for people, but yeah, cause it I, is I can't like help but like th- just think that whenever yeah, I see it, you know? It's true. Because now it's more like that's the hub of the community. That's yeah. like where social activities happen. This is where you, you know, you meet your wife. This is I where, totally understand that. And like, that's historically, it's like, how? <laughs> yeah. And I understand that, like, that's a big pull for a lot of people into in religion is for that, like, community hub and yeah. that social interaction and a lot of stuff, especially now where we don't have as much of that you know that's not online anymore, yeah right so yeah. i i under i understand that side of it yeah but at the same time it's just it doesn't it doesn't feel it doesn't feel worth it yeah yeah it's true um but again i'm i'm probably speaking from a place of uh, privilege so it's it's yeah, very but it's, it's very like it's very it's, hard to yeah <laughs> it's hard to justify i feel like yeah. this is something that it, it's it's i don't want to make any like hard and fast like yeah saying, like, no 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 <laughs> yeah i have to i have to quantify everything that i'm saying <laughs> yeah 
it's funny too, like with, with like with conflict and with religion, with mm-hmm. wars and religion and stuff like that. It's so easy as an atheist to be like, <clears throat> yeah, religions cause all wars, and right. then just put your head back. And no, it hasn't. There's way more. It's more complicated yeah. than that. These things aren't black and white issues. Like yeah. that's the same thing we were. Yeah, it. it <sighs> I understand why a lot of this stuff is happening and you can see like reasons for it, but it doesn't mean that we know everything about it. Yeah. And we're not saying that this side bad, this side good, because yeah. that's not what it is. It's, it's, a, it's so many shades of gray. Yeah. And it's the thing is too, like, wh- is religion stopping wars? <laughs> no, it doesn't no. seem like it is. No. And it's supposed to be mm-hmm. a force for good. And it just doesn't feel like that to yeah. me. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> with the evidence that there is mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I don't know. yeah no it just seems like it's continuing a tradition of hatred yeah. more than it's pushing a future of peace yeah yeah exactly and it's like yeah religion disappears today we're gonna find other ways to have wars totally there'll be but, things that would take its place yeah and f- fulfill those same kind of purposes yeah but, i mean yeah like what, what's happening in the congo right now it's equally horrifying as what's happening in Israel, Palestine. And it's like, and that's less to do about religion and more about corporate greed. Right. Uh, more about our need to have a, a smartphone. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and just like, ugh, I'm going to start crying. It's, it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. but I mean, that's the problem with a lot of this too now, right? Yeah. Like we're, we're very aware of like the Israel Palestine thing just because yeah. it's so prevalent in Western culture, but there's yeah. so much happening right now that we're not seeing and that we yeah. don't have news coverage for, and we don't necessarily know about, yeah. right. And, they, and stuff that's been happening and ongoing for years and years and years too. Right. It's, yeah, exactly. It's uh yeah, this, this stuff is unfortunately going to keep happening yeah but But, uh, yeah that but i think staying silent about it and just being like well it's gonna happen um yeah i wasn't trying to imply that yeah but uh i think some people do kind of have that like kind of defeatist like well what what are we gonna do it's like i don't know but we gotta do something (laughs) i don't know what it is well sign some petitions go in some protests first thing yeah, yeah protest vote yeah Voting is huge. That's yeah. a big, 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 big thing lately is especially younger people are not voting. Yeah. And this has been something like, um, I was I was a little more apathetic about, about it years ago, but I feel like the last like 10 years I've gotten a lot more. Yeah. Like at, at, at least just, just go out and do something. Yeah. And then, I, I mean, we have such minor problems compared to what's happening in the world in Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, just the state of things over the last, like, few years with our current uh, premier yeah. and stuff that's happening. And not to say that he's the sole cause of everything. Like, it's kind of been no. years no. of uh, terrible people selling out to corporations yeah. and, you know, donors and stuff. But these things aren't going to change if people aren't voting. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, even, like, it's tough. It, it is tough. Like, you look mm-hmm. at the Canadian politics, it's like... You have Trudeau, who sucks in so many ways, but is way better than Pierre Polyev. Yeah. And then, but there's also, like, the NDP, probably, they're who I usually vote for, but also, like, they've been pissing me off in some yeah, areas, yeah, yeah. too, lately, and they're, they've been taking some stupid stands, like... And I, I think, for me, I have such a problem with this idea of career politics now. Yeah. And it seems that it's it's it seems to be something that is so disincentivizing for people to actually have the best interests of yeah. the populace in mind. Yeah. Where all it ends up being is just that they're very good at seeming like they're doing something good for people when at the end of the day all they're doing is trying to line their pockets and line the pockets of the people who are uh paying them. Yeah. And that's that's something that I can see why people would get, you know, a little jaded about and, yeah. and uh you know down so yeah. but again again none of that's going to change if you don't if you don't get active and you yeah. don't vote and you're not actively trying to do this stuff like exactly. i don't know if there's not an easy solution to any of this this isn't yeah. stuff that's going to happen overnight yeah i uh i wrote a letter to our uh, member of parliament to my mm-hmm. member of parliament in this um neighborhood about uh, palestine and then like a couple days later i got a thing in the 
in the mailbox from the same member of parliament that she's just putting in everybody's mailbox. But it's like mm-hmm. um, basically saying she stands with Palestine while also having the first thing you see is an Israeli flag. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, why did you choose that? Okay. <laughs> I guess it's where it's happening, but hmm. it's, uh, I don't know. It's it's weird. Like, it's I'm g- glad you're, you know, taking a stand in, and I'm glad, hopefully, enough people have written you <laughs> to be like, are you going to do yeah. anything? But, yeah, it's... Damien, do you think we should thank some beautiful patrons? <laughs> yeah, I think they'd really like that. Yeah. Let's thank them. Oh, my God. Wow. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Bible study where we study the whole Bible. We're studying everything from A to Z mm-hmm. uh, uh, or E to B. A, yeah, E to B, that's, that's the biblical alphabet. That's yeah. when you start at the end of Bible and go to the beginning of the Bible. Yeah. E to B. E to B. We go back to front. Amen. Back to front, just mm-hmm. like... You, well, you're you not wipe. supposed to go back to front. You can get an infection that way. Oh. Well, I'm doing it wrong? Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, I'll go, I have a doctor's appointment this week, so... We'll okay, discuss. well, I'm glad to hear that. I hope it's uh, not one of those science doctors. So. Yeah, oh. me too. No, no, he's... Uh, Christian scientists. Christian scientists. Yeah, <laughs> they're just gonna look at me and be like, "It's probably because you're evil." Mm. Yeah. yeah, I've been saying that for a while now. Mm. But speaking of evil, mm. we've got some huge prayer requests. Oh, I can't wait to pray the evil away from all of these mm. lovely, lovely people. Amen. So let's just raise up, raise them up, away from the evil. We want to raise up a Morgan, mm. and let's not forget good old Trash Kitty. Mm. And oh, oh, how could we forget Kenneth? And uh, Bunny Boop. And, of course, Rumbling Bread. Ah! Rumbling Bread. Sorry, that scared me. Yeah. I'm Rumbling scares me, but um, I have a huge prayer request mm. for Eric. Mm-hmm. Um, Eric's been, you know that thing where you dress up as a bush, where you put, like, the hunting stuff on, so you have, like, leaves all over you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you hide, and mm-hmm. you, like, jump out and scare people? Yeah, and then you set yourself on fire to, and pretend to be the Lord? Yeah. 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 Eric's been doing that a lot lately, mm. but like not in areas where there are trees. So, uh, and they're not hiding like it's a, they're yeah. a tree. So they're just like standing in the middle of a, a brightly colored um, shopping mall mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. a tree. And people aren't scared. They just see no. them coming from a mile away. So, Eric, I appreciate the effort, um, but we just pray that you just come up with a better prank. Yeah. Learn to hide better. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to lift all these people up to the Lord God uh, Almighty, mm-hmm. Savior mm-hmm. of the planet um, Earth. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, then and only the planet Earth. Only the, the center of the Earth, universe. center of the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to do some Christian rock lyrics. Yes. Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. Okay, so this Christian Rock, you know, you know Christian Rock, right? Yeah, I know it. Oh yeah, you're a big fan of Christian. Oh rock. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Do, are there many Christian Rock bands that have guitars shaped like crosses? I don't think there's enough. Is that sacrilegious for them to do that? I don't know. Actually, that's a good question because have you seen the cartoon of the Christian or of the cross that has like a face and dances around? No. Oh, uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but I mean, like Prince had his like. Uh, love symbol guitar. Yeah. So why not one shaped like a cross? That's like that's that'd be question. pretty good. Yeah. Um, Just saying. if any band would do that, it'd be Petra, who we're going to talk about today. Oh, Petra, the greatest Christian rock band of all time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. This song is called "This Means War." Okay, I'm excited because they don't care. <laughs> you know, of course, that this means war. <laughs> Son of the morning, highest of all. You had so much going till you took the fall. Had a place in the glory, but you wanted it all. Impossible ends, but you had the gall. It seemed so unlikely that you would rebel. Such a worthy opponent that you knew so well. But you went down fighting when you heard the bell. Took a third of all heaven when you went to hell. This means war, and the battle's still raging, war. And though both sides are waging, the victor is sure, the victory secure. But till judgment we must endure, this means war. 
Um, so that's about Satan falling. This is about Satan falling. Yeah, okay. which isn't really biblical. So. No. Who made up that Satan fell? A lot of people, uh, but I think it really got solidified with Dante, mm. Dante's Inferno, um, or no Paradise Lost. Sorry, ah, Paradise Lost. Is that Milton? What was, what's that? Milton? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Um, there's a. It's a mixture. Like there's a couple prophecies about kings falling from glory in the Bible that people will retroactively. Say it was Satan, Satan falling, but right. it's about like, hey, you're gonna fall from glory because um, you're occupying Israel or whatever, um, and then um, so prophesying against them, and then later people yeah. are like, no, that's referring to Satan. So right, yeah, okay, yeah, it all goes full circle. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems weird that you're talking about a guy who you know kind of saw. <laughs> the bullshit that God was doing is like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm just going to leave. Yeah. Sorry, bud. Yeah, your plan isn't very good here. Yeah. I'm going to try my own thing. Wait, so you're all powerful and supposedly all loving, but you're promising eternal damnation if they don't do everything that you say to the letter. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Do you right. Think, so when he left heaven, he took all the good musicians. Is that what he did? He must have, right? Because oh. like, that's why... He, Satan's rock is way better than Christian's right. rock. True, 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 uh, true, true, true. Yeah, I, all the artists, like, satanic art is way better than Christian. Yeah. Well, I guess the Renaissance, but... Mm. But I feel like a lot of them weren't... They were fucking. They weren't necessarily Christian. A lot of them were just... they Their patrons were Christian. Right, yeah, exactly. A lot, like, yeah. so much of that stuff was commissioned Christian artwork. That's true. Not because yeah. they're like, oh, it inspired me to draw the Lord. Yeah. It's like, no, some rich guy paid me a lot of money to draw the Lord. Yeah, which is why, like, Michelangelo <laughs> did God in the shape of a brain. Um, mm. As, like, because if you look at, like, the creation of man... Yeah. Like, the, it's, like, exactly a brain, and that's because he's... Saying, yeah, I've been paid to do this, but really, we created God. It comes right. out of our mind. God. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought he drew it in the shape of a Brian. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I get those two mixed up all the I get, time. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> do some Brian teasers. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough Brian teasers out there. It's true. <laughs> well, thanks, Brian. You've been great. We love you. There's one person named Brian listening, like, holy fuck. Hey, <laughs> that's <laughs> me. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Love you. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. 